Uh, okay guys, hi. Um, we're trying a bit of a new idea here. Uh, yeah, so what we're going to do is we are driving to the theatre, or the cinema, or the motion picture extravaganza house. The place where they show the pictures. <laughs> the moving images. Um, and the idea is we're going to talk about like what we think the film is going to be like. Yeah, or and just then, the film. And then we're going to talk about after we watch the film. On our so way home. it had better be good, because otherwise, actually no, if it's good, there's not really much to talk about other than it's good. Yeah. Just hope the film's bad. Although we are going to see Star Trek Beyond, so it's probably not going to be bad. Yeah. Well, I mean, as long as it doesn't do Star Trek yeah, Into not, Darkness, uh, the, 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 that film. This is the only sequel that they've made <laughs> thus far to 2009. 2009 was a fantastic film. It, it was. Like, not just a Star Trek film, but it is no, a fantastic it, it, it film. Is, it is like up there with Iron Man for me as just being a, you take away the like legacy of anything, it's just an awesome film. Yeah. Um, Into Darkness is an abomination <laughs> that should never have been put to the screen. My name is Khan. Why? Why? <laughs> just <laughs> Film annoys me on so many levels. Like everything they get wrong is ridiculous. Just the setup. Yeah, just actually, no, I'll give it in the darkness. The opening, maybe two and a half minutes, <laughs> is, 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 is basically like watching Phantom Menace. Phantom Menace opens like really strong, the same way Into Darkness does. Mm. And then you have like, oh yeah, there's, there's Kirk, he's on the run, he runs into McCoy, like, damn it, man, that was our ride. And then kill the, uh, stun the creature, natives chasing them. And then the Enterprise rises out of the water for no damn reason. <laughs> just because it's a spaceship. Yeah. They have transporters and they have shuttlecraft. They use both of which <laughs> in the same friggin' scene that there is no point them just park being it, underwater. Park it far away. That's all they got to do. And the first thing they do is Scott even says, it wasn't designed to park underwater. It's like, well, why the shit are you parking underwater then? <laughs> well, we were saying earlier on, weren't we, about this would actually be really good if you flip the reason why it's parked underwater. Yeah. So if you were doing, uh, say, maybe either a, a bait and switch trap or oh, something. Oh, yeah. Like, like, you know, you had like Klingons show up or whatnot, and you had like, you know, the, and you the needed Enterprise to hide. To hide. You couldn't hide it in orbit, so you had to hide in a thing. But the natives with no warp technology or anything, there's no reason to hide a damn thing. Yeah. It's, it's just, and it just goes on from that in its stupidity. I mean, we made a parody called Into Dumbness, and I feel like that actually would have been a better title for the actual film. Well, I think, didn't IO9 like, use that for their review? Oh, I think they did, because it, it's just... I mean, the, the other like key problem is, is for some odd reason, they decided the plot twist of the film needed to be that they are Khan. But why? <laughs> like, yeah. why hide the fact it's Khan? Because hiding the fact it's Khan makes no difference to anybody involved, because he is just... He shows up, and he goes, oh, my name is like John Harriman, or whatever the hell it is. That probably is correct. My brain keeps random information, <laughs> even from things I don't like. Um, <laughs> that he shows up and he's like, "Oh, okay, this is John Harriman. He's not pretty thing. Like, what? Why not just say he's Khan? Like, he he left for space in 1996. It's the 23rd century. Like, is somebody going to sit there and go, oh, shit, must be the same Khan? Yeah, <laughs> just must be like Khan Nooni and Singh. Like, there can only be one person with that name in the entire. Yeah, universe. like that somebody's like, it's not like they're going to go, oh shit, I should Google this guy. Oh look, this is from 1996. Must be the same guy. <laughs> You know, like hundreds of years difference must be him. No other way it's going to be somebody else. But, I mean, like going back to the 2009 one, they got that all so right. I mean, I think there's one of the strongest emotional films as an opening. The opening with Thor. With Thor. <laughs> with, with pre I got yoked Thor um, <laughs> is pretty badass. And the whole changing history thing is they did a really good job of like finding a balance between it being a reboot and not being a reboot in that there's enough fan service in there that, you know, I, I feel like, I because I grew up on Star Trek, I'm a massive Trek fan. Like, I love everything to do with Star Trek. And there were so many people I know who just gave the film so much shit because they were like, oh, it's, they kept advertising it's not your father's Star Trek or whatever. Yeah. And it was like, no, it's not. But, like, it doesn't need to be because, like, as proven by television, Star Trek can't exist in the way it did <laughs> for, for, you know, 40 years at that point. Like, it, it just cannot exist the same way. Like, if you put an episode of The Next Generation on and then you watch an episode of Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones is just, like, an action, adrenaline, like, dark, gritty stuff. Star Trek The Next Generation, or any of them, is Patrick Stewart talking to a screen <laughs> for 45 minutes yeah. for the majority of the time. And not to say that that isn't good television, but, but for the era it was in, it was great. But, like, even that show, you know, you watch, like, they had, like Voyager and Deep Space Nine, they kept adding more action into it because it was like, well, people want action. 
Yeah. You know, people want explosions. People, you know, audiences want Michael Bay stuff on the small screen. Yeah. Added into good television, and Star Trek kind of struggled to find that balance between the politics of space and universe, and you know, civil rights and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And action. Well, I mean, in the new one, you do have Kirk doing his uh, his Monster X Games back flipping yeah, motorcycle. I, I have no idea how that. <laughs> I mean, in the trailer, that just seems really, really odd. And they, yeah. I mean, we have seen him ride a motorbike in two thousand and nine. So yeah, yeah, there is, and he did do the the whole driving a car off a cliff yeah. thing. And you know, so he's clearly this Kirk. I mean, that's the other thing is not only did they in two thousand nine get some characters exactly right they changed some characters a lot mm. and like James T. Kirk in these new films is nothing like William Shatner's James T. Kirk or kind of he's kind of like James T. Kirk in like Star Trek 3 where he becomes rebellious and he's like I'm going to yeah. steal the Enterprise but prior to that he's everything is by the book I don't break the rules he's just like we do things of all this stuff and they were just yeah. like they basically made him more like Han Solo yeah. than Captain Kirk a little bit which I, maybe is because J.J. Abrams is a massive Star Wars fan. It's yeah. just kind of lucky that he got to make a film with Han Solo in eventually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's probably the. I mean, like you look at like, you know, Bones. Like Carl Urban is just like channeling DeForest Kelly in every friggin' scene. Like he is the person out of the whole cast that just nails it. I think for me, like uh, Carl Urban, I've never seen him in a bad role. In Red, in Dread, in, <laughs> in things that don't rhyme, in things that don't <laughs> rhyme. But I mean, like. Uh, you know, in um, Riddick, I he's always been great. Fucko. <laughs> yeah, and I think I, I I absolutely love him because he knows when he needs to show his thing, but he doesn't steal the scenes when when he's not. And he's he's always a reliable. I I want to call it secondary character. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Never, I mean, the only lead one he's had is Dread. He's awesome in that, but to be honest, the art form's not about him. But he is. Yeah. In these films, he is just like a walking tribute. Yeah, to DeForest Kelly. I mean, there's other characters who play it very differently. You know, John Cho Sulu is a bit different than that. Uh, you know, Anton Yelchin. You know, rest in peace. And, you know, all that. He he is a really, really, really great Chekhov. And that's my the one thing I'm glad now is they said that they're not gonna yeah. recast. You know, whenever these characters end their role, they just leave the ship. Well, and the, that's it. The great thing, all they need to do, if they need to bring that up in the in the next film, if if they need to, all they do is say he's been promoted to captain now. Well, just reassigned. Reassigned. I mean, yeah. basically, we've seen in the trailer that the Enterprise gets blown to shit. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, people get reassigned to different ships all the time. I mean, yeah. to be honest, in the original series, Chekhov wasn't on the Enterprise for most of it. It's like one of the, the, the most annoying things in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, is that Khan gives a speech like, I never forget a face. <laughs> and it's like, but you never met Chekhov. Yeah. <laughs> he was not on the show when you were. That's, like, that's you how, guys never shared yeah. a scene. <laughs> He saw a picture of him once. Just like didn't forget him. So like Chekhov's like he walked into Chekhov's room and there's this picture of Chekhov like posing all over the place. <laughs> just you know, but that's that's the other problem with Into Darkness. You cannot be Ricardo Montalban. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cass, exactly. Cass, man, I have him. I th- I've always found Benedict Cumberbatch, he is incredibly similar to every role he plays. He he's is. one of those actors, he's a great character actor, but he is only really a singular one. Like Khan isn't actually played that differently from Sherlock Holmes. No, it's just very. It's just a very angry Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Is a lot. I mean, I think the thing is, is that they cast him based on the. I want to say the popularity of Sherlock at the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Rather than casting fully committed to it, because I, I think uh, Benicio del Toro was supposed to do it originally, which would have been amazing, and then dropped out because if you were going to do Khan, yeah, and you were going to replace Ricardo Montalban, <laughs> <laughs> this amazing actor who did just, you know, is in probably my top. Two villains of all time, yeah. With Frank Langella as Skeletal, I mean, that's, it's, it's ridiculous. Don't judge yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. But he's like, they just chew the scenery, and like, what kind of Montalban is essentially never filmed any scene in that film with William Shatner, yeah. Because they they redressed the Enterprise set, so they filmed all their stuff there. And but the tension between these two characters, every speech he gives, yeah, is just like the most romantic supervillain you've ever get. Like everything is so eloquent that he says. Um, and just you know this, the, the fierceness of like back and forth. And that was just something that they never really got with Chris Pine yeah. and Benedict Cumberbatch. And I think it's just like Benedict Cumberbatch is so dry that he didn't have the flair to him of like Ricardo Montalban was like relishing yeah. in his evil all the time. Well, not evil, just his, his intellect of yes. like I am smarter than you in yeah. every way. Like he's you enjoying, cannot win. He's <laughs> enjoying that he thinks he's winning. Yeah, 
Well, I, mean, I mean, he is winning up until I mean, one pivotal that, point. That is the thing. And I mean, that again, that leads to great little character moments in that film that they try to rip off and fail miserably. I mean, <laughs> you know, the, the one I love is just, you know, Kirk, I'm laughing at the superior intellect. <laughs> just, you know, how they beat him is the fact he comes from the, you know, the, the way they outsmart him. And they, again, rip it off in this one here is to trick him. Yeah. But the trick they pull is a lot better. Like, we'll go inside the nebula. And we do this like, but he thinks two dimension, like three dimension. Like he doesn't think in the fourth dimension of like he's yeah. not used to space travel. Yeah. Like he comes from 1996. Yeah. So he'll just be going like, so we'll we'll go higher up, and he won't know whatever we you know friggin' that again. Yeah. Adds to an action scene in a film that is just a submarine fight. Yeah. For 20 minutes. Yeah. You know there is no we're gonna blast the crap out of everything. There's about four shots fired, and it's really epic and tense. You know, whereas Into Darkness is like, just, it turns into a Michael Bay Transformers film by the end of it, of just everything yeah. being fired. And, you know, just, I mean, this ship they designed was cool. And I actually really like the warship. Was, it was cool. Yeah, for what it was, I actually really like that side of things. And I love that they just managed to, that beautiful shot where they showed the scale of it. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Where it walked right in front. Yeah. And it's like, oh, shit. I mean, Into Darkness did some cool stuff. I, I like the Klingons. I yeah. thought they, they kind of did a fun, like, not re- like rebuild of them, but they did kind of keep them mm. in check. You know, there was just it's mainly my problem with that film. That I kind of hope they resolve in this is that they didn't make a Star Trek film. Yeah. In that the problem with the last two films is 2009, Love It Takes Place on Earth. Yep. Into Darkness, where we go in space that much, we go from Earth to the Klingon homeworld mm-hmm. of Kronos back. Yeah. To Earth. Pretty damn quickly. Yeah. And basically everything takes place like the space Between is there big. And Jupiter, you know. Jupiter. Nobody boldly goes anywhere in these films. There's the no boldness. Yeah, this is the, the first time where you actually see them out in the final frontier. Yeah, you know, the, the, yeah. I granted they end the film by going, we're going on a five-year mission, which is yeah. the thing. But it, it just kind of, they just kind of went, oh, well, it'll, it'll be Earth, like San Francisco, it'll crash. And I mean, I still feel like there was a lot of intention of making a good second Star Trek film, and they just couldn't figure it out, and they went with the simplest thing, which was to just take the most popular Star Trek film yep. being Wrath of Khan and just use that as the template yeah. and it's like you don't need to keep like taking things from old shows in fact what I would have loved if you're going to reference an old thing is go back to like an old episode of the original series that isn't as iconic yeah. and take a character from that and you know make that the plot so how do you feel about um, obviously the big thing on this one is Simon Pegg is one of the lead writers on it and he's obviously been saying how much of a big fan he is which you know is one thing how much do you think that's going to influence, or do you think he's going to be smart enough to stay away from, like, making the same mistake they did with Into Darkness? I think he, as much as, like, I used to love Simon Pegg. Like, Simon Pegg was one of, like, I loved Edgar Wright, Simon Pegg. They, they, as a writing duo, they were great. Recently, I've not been as big a fan of Simon Pegg, mainly for, like, some of his attitudes towards, like, geekdom and, you know, things like that. Yeah. You know, he took some serious smack about, like, the, the superhero film franchise, all these kind of things. Yeah. And I don't know, I kind of felt like he kind of hated geeks for a while. Yeah, um, and obviously they're making this, but I kind of feel like at this point he he knows all these actors that are in it and the range that all the people he's working with have. Mm-hmm. So I mean, maybe that will help him do it. He is obviously a fan of, of I mean, the series. So. Being being able to actually approach it from an actor's point of view, then maybe yeah, um, like he might know the range. I mean, granted, he is in my opinion the worst actor out of all of them oh, playing yeah. a character. He the guy who should have played Scotty is the guy who played the Doctor on Stargate Atlantis who auditioned for it and then became the guy in the cargo bay who gives them their assignments and tells Kirk he can't go yep. onto a ship and I'm like you, you wasted like the guy is like a perfect Scottish accent he's a Canadian actor Yeah. but he one he looks more like Montgomery Scott two he sounds more like Montgomery Scott and I just feel like Simon Pegg kind of got it because J.J. Abrams is in, in him did Mission Impossible and they were yeah. kind of buddy buddy and liking Star Trek you sit there and go what role could you put Simon Pegg in yeah. literally there's that there's not really much he's not going to be Captain Kirk he's not going to be Spock yeah. he's not going to be McCoy he'd be a terrible McCoy um, they, do, they do seem certainly with the okay so the first trailer was a little bit everyone had a bit of a weird reaction to the it. first trailer they tried to make an act they tried to get butts and seats yes that's literally it it was like we have the guy who did Fast and Furious we need to compete with some of blockbusters yeah. let's just make a big action trailer we I think it was mainly to get rid of the stigma yeah. that Into Darkness had kind of given them of like we made a big film but we also made a film people didn't like even yeah. people that didn't like Star Trek didn't like yeah um, I, th- I think um, I think it's quite smart bringing in someone like Justin to give it a different style but he's very good at action so if they are going to go action wise he is um, great at stylizing that yeah I mean 
they've also like, I don't know whether that's a good thing or not but I think it's good that they it, it could tried work it with him pretty well I mean like the ship travelling through warp they've done a whole new way of showing that in that trailer with the kind of rippling bubbles which looks freaking cool I mean I have to say like some of the art direction I know it's only the poster but I think the poster they put out is probably one of the best posters in a long long time yeah well it doesn't have Benedict Cumberbatch's back <laughs> so that's, that's that's step one of making a, a fresh poster and I yeah. mean it is one that I feel like will get ripped off mm. by so many different things yeah like the rainbow colour palette well Suicide Squad's got a very similar colour palette I mean maybe that's the thing this year is just bright vibrant colours as yeah. opposed to like the last couple of years it's been like there was that phase of like white posters with like black and white yeah all the time. You know, it's, uh, anyway but yeah it's uh, yeah. but yeah I mean I'm, I'm, I'm quite looking for it they, they did win me back a bit more from more of the, the second trailers especially when they started bringing in Oh, there's that great voiceover where he's talking about his dad. Blah, blah, oh, yeah, you, you, so, you spent so long trying to yeah. be your father, you don't know how to be you kind of thing. So the second trailers and the third trailers, they definitely put more of the philosophical, philosophical aspect of Trek back into a trailer form. I don't, again, I don't know how that's going to play out in the film, so we'll, you know, we'll find out, uh, but I, I quite like that. I think that was kind of the thing that they missed with Into Darkness, was that they, the one character who they develop but don't revert, develop correctly is is Kirk mm. and basically fundamentally Star Trek has although it's a big ensemble cast it's fundamentally been built for the majority of the, the original series and films around you know the, the friendship of you know Kirk, Spock and McCoy yeah. is that kind of trio are uh, the kind of core thing of it and they didn't really delve into those three characters in the last one in terms of like making them bond more like you yeah. could tell that they were friends and you know there was great scenes where you know like they I feel like you never really felt like Spock and Kirk are friends no. a lot of the time. And they kind of started to get that in Into Darkness a little bit, but they didn't really nail it home. It was only like you took him dying to, and then getting magic blood. <laughs> magic blood. Oh, fucking magic blood. The triple um, blood. Just triple blood. But I mean, like, a great example, going back to the 2009 one, is when you first meet uh, Bones. You know, he's pissing and moaning <laughs> that he's on this uh, transport ship. I throw up on you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, like, that from that, you know, you've got that... The next real big scene you see those two together with each other is when um, everything kicks off, and Bone does the injects him with the I can't remember the flu, the flu thing that sets off. I oh, know there's a whole chunk of scenes in between that. No, no, no. But I mean, like that's one of the next like bonding scenes. I oh, know they do the whole um, Kobayashi Maru. Yeah. Because they do the setup of that. It's like nobody takes the Kobayashi Maru more than once yeah because you, you fail it everybody fails it and he tries to talk him out of it and then whenever they're in the thing obviously yeah but I, well, I mean from, from when you see that it's one of the, the first few times where you see Bones uh, not it, help him rather than he's kind of like so in everything else like the Kobayashi Maru and some of the scenes where they're walking through uh, you know around the um, estate and stuff it's very much of him saying, no, you can't do this, no, you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. He's trying to pull him back in, whereas this is one of the few times where he's like, right, okay, well, we need to get you up into where he needs to get you to. Oh, okay, I just, I, I think that the scenes of, like, that kind of thing showed, like, more bonding of, like, he is always kind of looking out for Kirk, like a little brother, a little bit, hmm. in terms of things, where he's yeah. like, don't do it, you'll embarrass yourself. Yeah, no, I understand. Don't that. do that, which is exactly the same reason why whenever he gets him on the ship, is like, I... If I leave you here, you're going to cause trouble. <laughs> yeah, so true, I'm going to make you true. sick and bring you with me because as long as I'm around, yeah. you are going to be at least I can supervise yeah, at least the I can shit you're going to drag you. us into. Yeah, it's very true, very true. <laughs> Which I always feel is like the one great thing of like DeForest Kelly is like just the the classic "What have you gotten us into now?" syndrome yep. is always what I thought it was. Why Bones is always so miserable It's like we could avoid all of these things <laughs> if, if we just did things slightly differently but you're my friend and I'm going to go with you on this <laughs> but... so the um, yeah so obviously they've had like quite a few trailers now um, and it's obviously going to be something that they want to kind of try and keep the franchise going I don't know if they, have they announced anything about potential future plans still I think there probably will be another one I think it's mainly with Star Trek is very dependent on how this goes I mean there is kind of it being the 50th anniversary of it I, I feel like Paramount is going to keep pumping them out because they don't own that many franchises yeah you know, they don't have that much to keep of their own stuff to keep pumping out mm. you know they, 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 they used to obviously I think they still have distribution deals with Marvel 
and they used to at one point. I think well, there's, there's Marvel a, now just completely go through Disney for all their distribution. Um, well, they still got those kind of uh, the legacy ones because there's, there's that great thing about Hulk, isn't there? Well, they're talking about yes, Universal. Sorry, about, Universal. Universal. Yeah. yeah, but it is because Paramount did Iron Man, like I think Iron Man Two. I don't know what the deal is. I can't even yeah. remember what logos play apart from the Marvel logo, which is good branding for Marvel. Yeah, because <laughs> I can't remember anything else. Um, but I don't remember seeing the Disney logo in the beginning. But I know they had the distribution deal to begin yeah. with for Marvel Studios before it got sold. Um, but I mean, they don't really have, you know, Universal has Fast and Furious and things like that that they can keep pumping out. Mm. So you know, you kind of need to go. Well, with you know, Disney have Star Wars films, yep. you know, churning out left, right, and center now. Yeah. That you know, you sit there and go Star Trek. That's the one thing we got. Which obviously they've kind of, I think, I mean, it's kind of <laughs> repeating Star Trek the Motion Picture a little bit because that only they were going to make a new Star Trek TV show called Phase 2 yeah like back in the day after because Star Trek the original series everybody kind of forgets got shit canned yeah after three seasons like it got the Firefly treatment and then fans petitioned so much yeah. that it actually got them to go okay we'll, we'll make another show and they were building sets from it and everything and then Star Wars came out and every film studio wanted a sci-fi film so you know oh you shit go. we own Star Trek well let's, let's turn that into a film yeah and then they made a really shit film yeah. um, but luckily spawned some other good films I know some people like them there's, there's one good sequence in it but it's like 25 minutes long and it's just beauty shots of a model <laughs> and it's a bloody good model but it's 25 minutes long of beauty shots of a model to like an awesome Jerry Goldsmith score so I mean that's one of the things we were saying the other day so obviously you've got the TV show that's now going to be spinning out yeah. of this um, and it's great that they're getting that which is weird because it's not in the same universe no which is I think a great idea so that they don't have to worry about too much about having to adhere to certain guidelines of whatever the film setting or vice versa it's just kind of I mean the, the, the only difficulty they now have is that uh, to be honest, what TV shows have kind of gotten away from where you had like superhero shows where they were like, you can't have Batman show up, you can't have Superman yeah. show up because it will confuse the audience if you have the main characters from our films yeah. show up in a TV show played by different people. And it's like, audiences are pretty intelligent. Well, like, I, I mean, I, I prefer that because I think one of the best things that happened on TV in recent years was the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. tie into The Winter Soldier. Yeah, I mean, that, that was kind of a good example. I mean, that's... I think... I feel like the TV show aspect of the Star Trek one is to appease fans, as in hardcore old school, yeah, old school fans, yeah, yeah, yeah. of just like, here is a Star Trek show. Like, you guys want Star Trek. You don't want the J.J. Abrams universe Star Trek. You've complained so much that, you know, that's the only Trek you're getting. You want back to that kind of storytelling. Let's do a TV show yeah. again. Whether that TV show lasts long enough is, you know, if it gets past one season, yeah, but I also kind of feel like the studio is kind of like it's the 50th anniversary. We should do something to do it. So even if it's a mini series, like you know, you Netflixed out like here's like eight episodes. Yeah, of this thing, and that's all you get. At least you can say you've got more Star Trek in that Star Trek universe that you know has, has that many years of heritage to it. Yeah, you know that predates all the JJ films. You know, you're. I think as I recall, it's set between the original series and the Next Generation. I think. Yeah, is the kind of time frame of it. The thing that I really want to see and said about the the models is I want to see them do a bit more old school effects. Especially yeah. if it's a series, they could take the time to build a really beautiful model. But they won't. They won't. No, I, I mean this, they the, the, the promo trailer they brought out is it looks like TV CGI. Yeah. Which is sad a little bit because I mean the model work in Star Trek has always been kind of great, but it's um, the design of the ship. I'm not that keen on. I understand why they did it because basically. Phase two that showed that they were going to make Ralph McQuarrie did a whole bunch of designs for redesigning the Enterprise yeah. that went a little bit too far, um, and they went for one of those as yeah. the design of this new ship. Uh, I can't remember what that's called now. I remember it being announced at San Diego uh, Discovery. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, which is I, you know, again, it's one of those things of like, okay, I've seen that one clip of it sitting in the space dock powering up. Isn't that also it from Action Khan as well? Uh, uh, Ralph McQuarrie one, and that the Discovery, isn't that the, that's the Reliant? Reliant, sorry. Yeah. What's the, the one there? I'm sure it, what's the one that's in the um, space pool? Or is it... That's Excelsior. Or is it the third film? That's Excelsior's the third film. Okay. The Grissom's in the third film. You, li- you know what it's like. I, I know f- far too many things yeah. about Star Trek. <laughs> um, I mean, that, that, that's kind of the... Uh, I mean, it'll be interesting to see where they go with it. I think they announced Nathan Fillion's in it in some capacity. That'd be interesting. Um, I kind of hope he's not the captain. I, yeah. It sounds blasphemous saying it, but... He, he's been a captain. Yeah. And I he's out like now. He's too Best big. Job. He's too big of a known name in sci-fi. I feel like you kind of want to go for someone you 
don't know because like nobody knew who Patrick Stewart was. Yeah. Nobody really knew who William Shatner was back in the day. You know. I mean, one of the things I always found difficult to watch Scott Bakula in Enterprise was Quantum Leap. Yes. It's constantly playing in my head yep. every time I see his face because he is synonymous with that sci-fi show. So. Yep. You cast the guy that plays Malcolm Reynolds, and he plays a character that's not Malcolm Reynolds. Yeah. Everybody's going to be comparing it to the other character he's played in science fiction. I feel like you kind of want to go outside the realm. You know who'd be a good captain? Go the dude from Stranger Things. Yes. So we were watching yes. Sheriff Hopper. Yes. From uh, News. He would be an awesome captain. Okay. So what would be? What are you most looking forward to? I mean, like we're going to be what two minutes before we park yeah. up. So I mean, what's what's going to be? the one thing you're really looking forward to from what you saw in the trailers? I I guess I'm kind of looking to see how they bond as a crew or mm -hmm. anything else because obviously they kind of be very separate things. Seeing Kirk develop, I think, as a person and not being the cocky, <laughs> you know, thing. I actually want to see Captain James T. Kirk, not selfish. Yep. I'm going to do some action stuff and he's going to do some action stuff, but I want to see him actually do something that is captaining. Yeah. Yeah, in terms of like he's going up against a big bad enemy which we didn't even mention played by Idris Elba oh yeah he's yeah, going to yeah. be friggin you know cool who didn't want to do sci-fi yeah who didn't want to do sci-fi and we'll do it so I mean I'm hoping that again that would be the great thing of having an actual good villain like Nero was a pretty good villain but mm. like an actual deep villain that you kind of sit there and go that wasn't just a one trick yeah I would have loved to have seen more stuff of this bad guy yes exactly you know villain so I think Idris Elba would be pretty cool in that so I think a good a good biting of heads between Kirk and a bad guy would yep. be good. Not fighting, you know, just actually in some tact and dialogue and stuff. And just, you know, I, I kind of think it's also kind of sad, obviously, because it'll be the last time we ever see Chekhov yeah. in one of these things. So I'm kind of hoping he has some cool stuff to do, to, do yeah. to, you know, send him off. I guess the next thing is going to be us jumping back in the car after in about two hours' time after we've seen it. We'll you know, we've our thoughts. boldly gone and watched the film, The Final Frontiers. Uh, uh, definitely better than Into Darkness. Uh, yeah, def oh, <laughs> definitely better than Into Darkness. That's that's not even a difficult statement to make. Into <laughs> Darkness is just. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. The the, the I'm going to go straight in with my first negative was there was a bit too much shaky can on a lot of the action sequences, especially uh, like the, the fighting. Beginning. Yes, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. the beginning where the. But obviously, guys, sorry, you know we're back now. There's going to be spoilers. I, I mean, we should probably just stick at the beginning of this thing. A spoiler warning. Yeah, so you, if you watch this, it's going to be spoiled. I mean, we've just said at the beginning of it, we're going to talk about the film, watch yeah. the film, and talk about the film that we just watched. It would be a bit shit if we said, like, we needed nothing about the film other than they went to space and need some stuff. Um, <laughs> so there will be spoilers. But yeah, I really, really, really enjoyed it. I, yeah. I'm glad they did do a lot more of the camaraderie between everybody. There was a lot it, more character development. I, I think the thing is, is that what they did this time around that was good is that... The, the previous sequel, which we will not name or talk about anymore, <laughs> um, is that that was kind of set basically almost immediately after the events yeah. of the 2009 reboot. Yeah. This film is three years into their five-year mission, so yeah. they've been stuck together, uh, basically being stuck on a ship, Things on are... a submarine. Yeah. You know, but there's no nowhere to go apart from these little away missions every now and again. The same people and the same routine every day. So as much as they love each other, there's obviously that kind of brain that you know, like what well, we have. Yeah, you know, I've got to spend you know twenty two days with you, uh, and, yeah, uh, thing, and that's that's enough. Yeah, fed up with you. <laughs> I'm going to leave a metal pipe at the side of you. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite colour? <laughs> um, there were some great comedy moments. There, there was, well. they, mainly from Bones. But Bones and Spock, they got that that down to a T to like the old school Nimoy, DeForest Kelly kind of back and forth of just you know the sarcastic wit and the the admiration for each other while still hating each other not hating each other but just the we just you know, rub each other the wrong way on purpose yeah because we've been we started out that way and it just kind of feels like that's what you have to do yeah our sound is probably going to improve so much right yeah now. sorry we just realized we had the aircon on full right next to the microphone yeah, filmmaking. So, uh, fingers crossed you heard any of that. If not, I've just cut out like a whole chunk. Yeah, of, there was the probably the best. So review. just just to cover bases, we watched Star Trek Beyond, uh, and we liked it. Yeah. Is that pretty much recaps most of what we just covered? And Kirk and Spock are pretty awesome. I found. Um, I kind of wish I knew a little bit more what was going on with the baddie. Uh, a bit earlier on. I, I kind of clocked that pretty quickly, mm. um, mainly for the fact... As soon as they showed that video clip. As, as soon as the video clip played in the background, I swear, I think 
the, 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 I, at least I kind of hope it is because the face looked the same mm. is that the guy whose face you see in the clip at the beginning of it was his sidekick yeah because he looked and sounded a lot like him yeah um, and that was the point where I was like okay they're the crew of the Franklin yeah <laughs> just that, that's it I gotta admit though I did very much like the fact that they kind of did a thing where they were like it's the 50th anniversary of Star Trek let's merge old Trek Mm-hmm. and new and the Franklin was kind of that great middle ground of like here is a ship that takes place between because the only thing that is technically canon yeah in this Star Trek universe is Star Trek Enterprise which is a terrible terrible thing mm. to be canon but they make a lot of references to it in yeah. there which was you know as much as I hate it it was the last Star Trek TV show and you know it, it the last season of it was a lot better um, but I did like the fact that they the things that made me giggle was because I, I sadly have watched Enterprise more than once somehow <laughs> I owned it on DVD <laughs> Um, is that they like mention stuff like polar the polarized hull plating, mm-hmm. phase cannons, mm-hmm. um, the spatial torpedoes, things like that, and obviously like the NX registration before they had NCC before there was a federation properly. Like the, you know the the, the style of the ship. They had the red nacelles back yep. that they've not done on like anything apart from the Kelvin. Yeah. Um, and you know it just kind of it looked like a more old school ship. So it's kind of nice to have this old beater of a ship and the you know, the bridge is very compact mm-hmm. like the old TV show ones like it felt like a TV show set rather than the big expansive white yeah. I, you know Apple store yeah, yeah, yeah. of the Enterprise bridge yeah. um, where it's all cluttered and busy yeah definitely definitely the um, obviously then towards the end as well with some of the kind of the musical scores <laughs> Uh, has, as well. I mean, to be honest, anybody who complains about that thing has clearly never watched. Like, anybody who loves Star Trek and is like, oh my god, they played some music <laughs> over a, a, a scene in the Star Trek. I was like, watch Star Trek First Contact. One of the best moments in that film is the guy who invents warp drives at yeah. Cochrane going, oh my god, we can't take off without it. <laughs> Putting in a, the equivalent of a CD yeah. to play. I mean, uh, was it um, Stephen Wolf? Stephen Wolf, yeah. Ah, uh, just just Magic carpet ride. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As they take off, you know, everybody has to pull their headsets off. <laughs> you know, so like, and sabotage has kind of been like the, I guess, underlying theme that they've had since that first, yeah. You know, Trek trailer. And yeah, I, I, it, it's, it had a great energy to it as well. It was the the most ridiculous scene, like possible for a Star Trek film. And it kind of sums up, you know, where Star Trek is at with. You know, with these things, where it's like kind of like, well, we have to have that mix of what you expect from a thing. I mean, there was a lot of it that felt Fast and Furious in places. I'm going to be honest. Very much so. The uh, camera didn't stop moving. I think I think I counted like four tripod shots. Yeah, I don't think he knows what a tripod is. <laughs> um, I mean, like the I mean, the main one that got me was I was like straight up. This just feels like they shot for shot remade. Was the um, the motorbike grab? Yes. Which basically feels like whenever Dom catches Lenny and they fall on the the car at like eight miles yeah. an hour. <laughs> I was fully expecting at some point him to get you know a wrench and have street oh, yeah. smarts. This, I mean, that that was the. Um... But there was very. I I noticed that specifically at the beginning, the way he does character building was very similar to the Fast and Franchi- uh, Fast and Furious franchises in terms of the talking about you know how they were talking to each other. There was a lot, a lot of similar you can basically see with. Um, Dom and uh, especially when he was talking, you know, if you do the like Dom and Letty conversations half the time, um, but that was good. That was good. They built more on that. I think there was probably a little bit too much Simon Pegg. So I feel like he Simon Pegg a bit. beefed up his own role. Yeah, a lot. Obviously, writing it, he was allowed to beef up his own role. But there was like certain parts where I'm like, it feels like whenever like he gives her the uh, her, you know, the, the thing to go to the academy or whatnot at the end, it's like mm. I feel like this should be Kirk's. Yeah. moment of thing of like that he should be the one but it's like okay you and Scotty kind of bonded a, a little bit yeah. at the beginning of this thing it's like it kind of feels like he tried to make Scotty a bigger deal than Scotty has ever been in yeah. anything and not to say that he Scotty should be a bigger deal but whenever you're the writer of that thing I'm like it could have could have been any other character yeah you didn't that Chekhov I love the fact he had more to do him and Kirk going to the saucer yes. and stuff yeah. was a fun sequence. Their, their little back and forths were quite good. It was nice to see a lot of uh, Anton yeah. um, and Chekhov. Uh, you know, as you say, it was kind of a, quite a fitting finale. I, I did wonder if they recut that end part after he passed, mm. where they have the toast, because he says to absent friends, and dead centre of frame, yeah. 
and clear focus is Anton. Yeah. And I'm like, is that something that was shot, or did they digitally go back? Do that. And add Anton yeah. into like a, a shot there to replace where he is yeah. in the thing, which if they did is is really nice. You know, using you know, the Paul Walker system of yeah, you know, as a really nice tribute to him. Oh, does that mean that Justin Lin's a bit uh, <laughs> a bit cursed when it comes to all this? Yeah, let's not let's not touch on that. <laughs> Just, I, f- I felt the whole uh, Sulu sexuality thing was f- blown out of proportion. For it was such a tiny thing that was it actually shown. It was massively blown out of proportion, and it was a tiny, no tiny need. thing. No need. Um, I still don't understand why they added it. I feel like almost now watching that, I feel like George Takai made a good point. Is like yeah. you could have introduced a brand new character, any character, to the crew. Yeah. To now continue these these you know these missions with them that you just go okay well for the 50th anniversary the core crew gets an extra crew member that would then go into the next film and the next film and the next film which obviously now with the party of Anton would have been helpful to them for that yeah exactly I kind of felt like the the, I like the fact they kept the daughter in there yes they didn't elaborate on that so like okay they kept the the Demora Sulu part in there yeah so there is that I just kind of felt like I can understand why George Takai didn't want it in there yeah as a thing because he had played Sulu a certain way yeah and you're kind of treading on the toes of another actor when you're you know you're trying to embody the skin of a character they've defined for yeah, so long yeah, yeah. the one thing I did love mm-hmm. is the fact that they acknowledge the original actors with the picture the picture and yeah. also yeah yeah and you know the passing off Spock as well yeah but they and they incorporated a lot better into this one here I mean they had Leonard Nimoy in the last film in a terrible cameo where yeah. they basically got Leonard Nimoy to tell them what to do. Yeah. You know, how do we beat him? Oh, well, you do this. Yeah. It's like, I just, it was just a terrible use of, you know, of Leonard Nimoy. It's kind of sad that that was the, the last use of Leonard Nimoy because mm. I, I felt like, you know, they could have done something so much better with him. I love what they did with uh, York City. Oh, the York, uh, Yorktown? Or Yorktown, yeah. sorry. Um, Which is weird because it's the name of a starship as well, but okay. <laughs> just, we'll go with it now. They've changed to a space station. That that lovely line of like, you know, oh, it's, why don't we just rent a planet? Yeah. Oh, you know, this is neutral. Yeah, you build um, you build somewhere where everybody is equal. Yeah. The thing. I mean, that, that I liked. I loved the, again, like going back to the Enterprise era of things before the federation was fully formed and you know the the military guy who can't get out of his mind said like i spent so long fighting aliens and now you want to break bread and make peace with them yeah you know the the, the whole federation thing kind of spat in his face mm-hmm. a little bit and there was that one moment that i thought was going to be quite cliche at the end where he saw his reflection in the bit of glass yeah and i was like shit he's going to wind up helping kirk now if he, he? I, I was hoping and i was just did. like nope just didn't didn't do that yeah. <laughs> just the only thing i i miss in this film is i needed kirk to drop kick a mofo <laughs> um just that's all i was missing was the the william shatner drop yeah. kick <laughs> for you know some action i mean the good thing is, is that they they made Kirk a lot better. Yeah. In this one here, Kirk felt a lot deeper and a lot more like a captain. A like, lot more of a leader. Yeah, he wasn't. Okay, he had that one bit with the motorbike yeah. sequence where it seemed like, okay, well, here's the Kirk we've seen in other films. Mm-hmm. But for the other parts, he seemed, as opposed to the last film where he went into the, you know, the warp core and did all that kind of stuff. Yeah. This time around, it felt more like here is Kirk being heroic, like he is willing to die to fight for the Federation and humanity and his crew and all you know, yeah. all these other things they kept trying to say that last time oh yeah you know your crew you never lost anyone or anything like that this time around it actually genuinely felt like here's a character trying to yeah. you know do well especially you know when the, the ship's being evacuated and you're seeing the, the, the hive you know in front of him pick up his crew and he's like fuck you know how am I going to how do I save them? How do I get them away? They will be swearing in this video. It's a bit like to say that now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to censor myself. It's not been working too well. Yeah, I'm driving and trying yeah. to talk at the same time. <laughs> um, but yeah, the um, I did like the evacuation of the Enterprise. Good. I like the fact that they're called. I, I think at least I heard that right. They're called Kelvin pods. Yes. Which is basically a great idea because obviously you have escape pods and then the Kelvin pods are around the bridge. Yep. So that no one ever has to go down with the ship. Yeah. Like his father, like his father. And I know. Like yeah. they basically built a safety protocol after George Kirk sacrificed himself. Yeah. To do that, and I'm like, that's that's nice. And I liked him and Bones' little thing with the alcohol, with the, the Glen Fittich or whatever. Yes, the, was the, the pretty good. Toaster you know, three. Yeah. yeah that they, was they, great. they they did a lot of good stuff, and I I I love the fact that they just went full in with Bones' fear of transporters, <laughs> and just like every time, and just him and him and Spock, the best bit of that. 
the whole thing is like your big tense action moments yeah. building and it's like I should go on this mission it's yeah. what if I brought someone both familiar with the ship and they would help my medical condition he is not going to be pleased about this decision yeah. <laughs> just that turn around like, wait, wait wait this was your idea you green blooded son of a bitch I'm, yeah, I'm a doctor not <laughs> that was uh, I just uh, Carl Urban just steals any scene where he's yeah. playing Bones really I mean everybody plays really well he is just for me the person who just Every like I can never fault anything he does in mm-hmm. those films because he is just if there's you know like certain actors have that one character that they are meant to play yeah. that that for me like, as much as you could go Dread is is his character Dread is no oh, range Bones is his Bones character. is Bones is yeah. Carl Urban that that is it no one should ever play Bones again apart from Carl Urban <laughs> if you reboot it just don't have Bones yeah. <laughs> just. No, I uh, I liked it. I liked it at the beginning. There was a nice bit of narration that kind of said it as well. Of look, we are tired of being on this ship of three years, and you know, obviously, you've got um, Spock saying, "Hey, look, I'm gonna possibly disappear," and you've got the captain going, "I might take a different job." You know, they're all tired of it. I mean, the one thing I I kind of disliked a little bit. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't hate it. I just kind of felt like you could. There was a. It was a bit too silly and comedic. Was the opening of the negotiating with the aliens, yes, and stuff. Because it went from that to this really deep scene of you know his captain's log, and I was like, I almost felt like I wanted to start, yeah, on the captain's log part, yeah, and uh, not have that little jokey. Well, it felt too similar to the opening to Into Darkness. To be yeah. honest, of the whole. All right, so they're not a primitive, but you know, Kirk in a situation where he's running from a group yeah. of. It was like I I understand like whenever negotiations go bad, but they don't have to attack Kirk all yeah. the time. It was like the the comedy of the nibbler, like yeah. you know, they're, they're tiny little creatures. Well, obviously the way they do it with the cinematography of that you don't realise they're tiny creatures yeah, until, until the last they minute. roll down. It's like you know, it was kind of it was fine and it was funny. And it, it, I mean, the purpose of that was there for them to get the device. Yeah. Um, I just feel like they could have done a slightly more serious version of that, or you could have had the, the you know them being presented with it by yeah. someone that they just made peace with, rather than having that comedic. Beat. And it was. I know the other point of it was to try and show you know that he was just you know fatigued and annoyed and you know just this was not yeah you know he didn't know what he was kind of doing and it was it, it, it kind of it worked but I feel like you could have done something better than that. I liked the, the the visuals of the walk was nice although once they actually walked to Yorktown they didn't really actually go particularly too far. No, the nebula's right next door to him. Um, which was a very kind of like Deep Space Nine esque style of yeah, right like, what, the water. Why did you build this right beside what looks like the most <laughs> menacing nebula I've ever seen? Like, if I saw that nebula, I'd be like, shit, no, we're going to build over yeah. there. Yeah, just like, a little bit back. Wherever we go, if that thing looks dangerous, yeah. odds are whatever's on the other side of it is dangerous. And they had the sensor arrays. I'm surprised they didn't have like mobile you know, weapons platforms. Well, the sensor arrays were firing phasers and stuff on them. Yeah, so, but and like, obviously the station had you know, defenses, but they did say. Whenever the Enterprise got attacked, that like the weapons were doing nearly nothing. Yeah, I suppose. So you know, it's kind of the whatever defenses the Federation has. I mean, that that was kind of the other good thing is like you kind of sit there and go, okay, well the crew of the the Franklin, obviously like the, the three survivors. Yeah. The reason that none of this thing worked is that at least their technology isn't as new as Starfleet's one. Obviously, they were hacking into the station, getting you know schematics and stuff. Yeah. But I kind of. I kind of felt like the foundation of the technology is they could have incorporated more Federation stuff into. What their into stuff, the baddies. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I know they kind of wanted to bait and switch that whole thing before you figured out who he was. Um, and Idris Elba was fine. I kind of felt like most people could have played that role. Idris Elba didn't really. No, fine he, he's, playing that role. He, I mean, he is normally quite a strong character actor. Like you know, whatever role he's in, I, especially when he's full on alien. Oh, it was. Uh, I also found English him very hard to understand in places, just the way that they manipulated his voice. Yeah, the, well, there was that, and also you couldn't quite read his lips, so you wouldn't yeah. be able to give the visuals along with. It um, was he. He was fine, but I, again, like th- there was no point where I was like, I feel like they didn't make him human enough at the end. Yeah. If they had had like him looking completely like back to normal, yeah, full Idris. and a thing, and he had like a full genuine moment with Kirk. I mean, that was the the, the most you know played out scene of actually Idris Elba was him explaining why. Yeah. He did the thing, and I was like, I was like, okay, it's kind of good that they didn't have him learn the error of his ways, which is the simple thing to do in one of those films. Oh, but of I still kind of feel like they, it was a wasted opportunity of having Idris Elba play that character, and you know, he could, you could have got pretty much most, you know, actors to do that, and uh, not had him. And I don't know the female, uh, sorry, the the character, uh, actress's name, the, uh, the main female. Sof- is it Sophia Burr? Uh, she was in, she was in uh, Kingsman. 
with the razor legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, she was really, really good. Um, I genuinely hope if they make it the next film, they bring her back as part of the crew. Yeah. I would watch more of her on screen and stuff because she was just really, really good and entertaining and... She was just the right mix. Just the right mix. I, don't, I didn't feel any... You know, I felt like she could kick any of their asses, but she was still having a joke with them. Yeah. And I did like the fact that Kirk didn't try and have sex with her ten seconds after meeting her. Yeah. Um, I did like the fact that the, in that montage of stuff, that Chekhov is the kind of ladies' man. Of the yeah. Ship. <laughs> Chekhov is flirting with everything that moves. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty good. Shout around yeah. his whistle. Um, <laughs> Victor, Victor. Um, but yeah, I, I like that. I liked how obviously in real time everybody has aged anyway. Yeah. But they changed the hairstyles and stuff, and you know they they kind of felt like they Mature, everybody was better. older than yeah. you know than what they'd done. The Ahura Spock thing kind of fine with it they, they did it a lot better in this one here than they did in the, the last one um, it wasn't too intrusive you know it wasn't like yeah you know all that kind of thing. it was just it's kind of fine yeah exactly um, but I, I thought it was really good as a film I, I don't think it's as good as 2009 but no. I put it up there as being in close to getting as quite a close that. second yeah definitely I mean I think similar for me I think 2009 just hit everything right and I still think like 2009 I've watched like a thousand times and I will watch a thousand more and never get bored of it yeah I think obviously you've got a bit more compelling uh, you know Nemo was a bit more compelling it Nero. was a bit sorry Nero <laughs> yeah. sorry Drive, I'm, <laughs> go, go find Nemo in space find that's Nemo. the new plot for the next yeah. one <laughs> instead of finding whales they're finding <laughs> finding a little tiny fish <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah I think uh, you know like I didn't I was upset that the, uh, the the Enterprise was getting destroyed, but in this one, not so much. I don't know whether it's just because you know you get slightly numb to seeing it happen. Out. I I actually teared up a bit whenever it crashed. Mm. I'm going to be honest, but then that's just because it makes me sad whenever they destroy any Enterprise. And it was, you know, they've got an Enterprise A now. I mean, to be honest, this new Kirk is a bit shit. The last, you know, William Shatner's Kirk, he got that ship around for twenty odd years <laughs> before it got destroyed, and then this got another one. He's had one? like six years, like. Four or five years of this ship, like I mean, the next one's got to get another twenty years out of it. So whoever the you know if Justin Lin makes the next one or whoever, don't destroy the bloody ship. <laughs> just have the ship survive. It can get damaged and rebuilt. Just don't blow it up again. Just don't blow it up. Give it another like three or four films and then take it down. But you know that that's so that's it. So overall, pretty damn good film. I yeah, I'm not going to give it like a number rating. I no, thought it was not. I thought it was really good, enjoyable. It, yeah, watch it it's, again. It's far better than Into Darkness. I would happily go watch it again, like right now. Um, oh, because we, we well we saw it IMAX 3D, and we don't normally go see 3D ones unless there's a reason. I didn't find the 3D that bad. Either. I thought it was quite good this time. I didn't even really notice that it was IMAX. I think parts of it were shot in IMAX, which, yeah, which you know helps. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean you don't really have to see it in 3D. There's nothing in there that's like oh my god, the 3D was you know the greatest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, but you know it's it is what it is does what it does it's Star Trek it feels a lot more like Star Trek than the last one there's yeah. philosophical stuff in there there's questions about humanity a lot more um, and character there's, build up there's character build up the relationships between the crew that's the camaraderie and then just it feels a lot more like Star Trek it's still action packed it's not your father's Star Trek as they kept advertising the old one but it's it's as close as you're probably going to get nowadays unless the CBS show you know really covers any of that <laughs> so yeah that's, that's my view of it. I liked it Cool. So, guys, uh, let us know what you think of this. Whether this is a good idea, we're going to do more of these videos. I think, what's next for us? Probably maybe Suicide Squad or something? Yeah. I'm not too sure. We've still got to see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's true. We have not seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That might be an interesting one to talk about. Yeah. But, yeah, let us know what you think, and uh, we'll chat soon. Yeah.